Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a casual Sunday reads. And to start, I wanted to plug my bestie CJ from CJ Reads on here. Um, she recently launched some merch for her new business. Um, she has a book truck, it's called Sunny's Book Truck, and I'll link it below. But she recently made merch and this is one of the items, the hat, lit thick, and then there's another hat that's black that says DWM, if you don't know, depressed woman moving, subgenre that <laughs> CJ coined um, that we all tend to read a lot. So I'm obsessed with this hat. I love the green. I love, love the font on here. Repping Sunny's book truck. And today I wanted to come on here and just talk about recent reads and potentially reading the International Booker long list and some book mail that I received. Sound like a plan? Let's do it. To start, I will go through the book mail that I received. So first up is from FSG. They sent me this really cool box of this book called Cult Classic. So it came with a t-shirt. One sec, I'll show you it after I show you the cover. Um, Cult Classic by Sloan Crosley. I have not read her stuff before, but what I know is this book is about, I think, a woman who sneaks out of a dinner and then she keeps running into different boyfriends from her past. Turns out that there's like a cult or something that's doing this to her for some reason. And so it's kind of like a romantic comedy, thriller, literary fiction situation. Sounds really cool, but it has this really cool box with like stuff in it. Oh, excuse my finger, sorry. And then, <laughs> and then these little candies on the back has this cool like heart thing and the front says cult classic on the chest. So that's awesome, I don't know. FSG is are my besties, I love them, and I'm, they reached out to me and said they wanted to send me the box, so I said, yes please. Yeah, I love them, I'm really excited to read this book, and this cover is so good, I'm obsessed with it. I'm kind of over like this trend of abstract faces on covers, but I like it here, and I like the color scheme, and it just looks nice. That's that, and then another book I'm super excited about is an Exciting and Vivid Inner Life by Paul De La Rosa. Uh, this is a Instagram friend of mine. Um, I actually came across his work because months ago I read Amy Baradale's story collection and I was just looking up like reviews on YouTube of it and he commented on the first story in that collection called William Way. He gave like his review analysis of the story and why he likes it so much. And from there I checked out his short stories and then he is publishing this collection out in the UK in June, June 2nd, 2022. So if you're in the UK, get this one on your radar. I'm really excited to read this one. He's a really strong short story writer and I'm excited for this. So basically on the blurb it says, it compares him to a Tessa Mosh bag and it says he is a masterful observer and hilarious eviscerator of our ugly beautiful attempts at finding meaning in an ugly beautiful world. Whether working in food service or in high end retail, lit by a laptop in a sex chat or by the camera of an acclaimed film director, or sharing a flat in a city or a holiday rental in Mallorca, the protagonists of the 10 stories comprising Paul De La Rosa's debut collection navigate the spaces between aspiration and delusion, ambition and aimlessness, the curated profile and the unreliable body. By turns unsparing and tender, De La Rosa explores our, li our lives in late stage capitalism, where globalization and its false promises of connectivity leave us further alienated and disenfranchised. Sounds hot as hell ready for it. Next up I have some books that Catapult sent me. This one is Portrait of an Unknown Lady by Maria Gainza, translated by Thomas Bunstead. So I guess she wrote the book called Optic Nerve, which I've heard of. I haven't read it myself, um, but it has blurbs from Alexander Kleeman, who I love, Amina Kane. I read her book Indelicacy, which I liked. I guess this one is about um, returns with the captivating story of an auction house employee on the trail of an enigmatic master forger. So I think this one is about like authenticity, art, counterfeit works. And yeah, I just really like Catapult's releases generally. And I know the editor of this book, I really like her taste. She edited um, Fake Accounts, which is my favorite book of last year. So I always kind of go to her for recommendations. So excited for this. And then next up, I have another story collection called Heartbroke by Chelsea Beaker. Shit, I don't know when these books come out. I think it's sometime this month. I think like in the next week or two. But this one is about a bunch of stories that are set in California, I guess. A defining book of Californian stories where everyone is seeking or sabotaging love. And so she wrote the book called Godshot, which I have not read, but it's the book with like all the glitter on the front. So very like similar in style to this, but this one has like candy. Yeah, I'm excited. I don't know if anyone's read Godshot, let me know what they think of that book. It seemed to be kind of popular on like Bookstagram and stuff, but I haven't read it myself. So I think I'm going to start here because I like stories and then read Godshot if I like it. Next up, I have Susan Strait's Mecca. This is one sent for me from FSG. I actually didn't request this book. They just sent it to me, which is cool. But I know the editor, Jackson Howard, he 
edited this book and he says he considers it to be like the great California novel. So that's all I really know about it. It says, in Mecca, the celebrated novelist Susan Strait crafts an unforgettable American epic examining race, history, family, and destiny through the interlocking stories of a group of native Californians all gra gasping for air. You know, some buzzy blurbs and I love this cover too. So if you're looking for a book set in California, get this one on your radar, but I don't really know what it's about, but I'll keep you posted once I check it out. Next up, I have one from Penguin Press. They sent me Nasty, Brutish, and Short Adventures in Philosophy with Kids by Scott Hershevitz. And I remember I requested this one because I've tended to find that I like philosophical-ish books. And this one is from a director of law and ethics program and professor of law and philosophy at University of Michigan. And so I myself am a lawyer. And I guess this is like him exploring life and philosophy through the lens of his two kids that are like kind of funny I guess. So not something I would normally pick up but I'm gonna try it out and see see what it's giving. I think I might like this. Yeah so like the different chapters are called like the art of thinking, rights, punishment, revenge, race and responsibility, sex, gender, and sports. So I guess it's kind of like this conversation I think with his kids about these kind of topics and it just sounds interesting. So we'll see. And I like Penguin Press a lot. So excited for that. Yeah, so that's the recent book mail that I've received. And then now I will just go into what I'm currently reading and what I recently read. So not much update on middle March. I think I have like 200-ish pages left. I will finish this in March. It's happening. Finally, we'll be done with this chunker of a book. And then I'm also reading Check Out 19 by Claire Louise Bennett. This book I'm really, really, really enjoying. I actually unintentionally stopped reading this one because I picked up Love in the Big City, which I have somewhere, one second. Love in the Big City, and so since I picked this one up, I haven't really put it down, and so I, yeah, I finished this one like an hour ago. So I'll start here. I loved this book. It is so, so good. It's, it's all about this one queer man living in Seoul, Korea, and you see him navigating just love, loss, longing, trying to be a writer, being poor, dealing with his weight, and drinking a lot with friends, going out, seeking solace in pop music, and just all the things that I love in fiction, this book has in it. And it's just so, at the same time, both heartbreaking and warm and just lovely to read. It's funny. It almost made me cry at the end, um, all about, you know, his different loves and losses throughout his life and him trying to find happiness while being queer in contemporary Korea. It's just so good. Highly recommend it. I'll have full thoughts in my wrap up, but I can confidently say this is one of my favorite books I've read so far this year. Five stars. Loved it. And so, yeah, I'm also reading Checkout 19. This book is very, like, weird and how it's told but essentially what it is so far is about one woman and her growing up to become a writer and so this book is all about books and writing and literature and what that means for people's lives and following this one woman and seeing how literature kind of informs her growth and development into adulthood and every story here or every chapter is a different short story essentially but they all kind of tie together as a novel and so i'm not too far into this one don't have too many thoughts on it but i am really loving it really interesting use of language and prose. It's all just interesting and weird and kind of different from what I've usually read before. So very literary on that front. And then finally, I did recently read this week um, Elena Ferrante's new book. My local bookstore actually put this out on their shelves quite early, and so that's why I already got a copy. I did not receive it from the publisher, but it's called In the Margins on the Pleasures of Reading and Writing. So it's a book of literary criticism, four essays about writing, and I found, oddly enough, I was reading these two at the same time, and they're so in conversation with each other, like, beyond. Because this book, the Elena Ferrante book, she really looks at autofiction in these essays and really looks at this kind of exploration of, of her becoming a writer and what she kind of seeks to do in fiction and kind of trying to play with writing outside of the margin. She kind of uses this uh, metaphor for when she was growing up, how she was told to be writing within the margins on a, on a lined piece of paper. And so this book really looks at the ways in which Elena Ferrante, she writes under a pseudonym and she's not really known. There's this idea of, of being an anonymous writer and how the character of an author that is Elena Ferrante, what it means to be writing like autofiction from that perspective and what it means to write reality versus not write reality. And this book is hella big brained, like, it was quite dense despite it being under 100 pages, but I think it is really interesting, especially if you're like curious like me about autofiction or just if you love Elena Ferrante, I think you should definitely read this book. It kind of goes into her inspirations of what she seeks to do with her books and she really looks at the inspirations behind um, the My Beautiful Friend series, I forget what it's called, the Neapolitan novels, which I have not read, but it's just interesting like seeing behind the lens and kind of knowing 
or behind the the writing and knowing what her inspirations are and how she thinks about autofiction. Yeah, I don't know, big brain vibes for sure. I'm curious to see what people think of this one once it's released. But it's a good quick little read if you want something short to, you know, meet any goals that you might have for reading. But it is dense, it took me a while to get through this one. So I kind of take that back, <laughs> but it was good. I liked it. Jumping back to Love in the Big City. I picked this one up like two days before the International Booker long list was announced. And so I was already like 100 pages in and it was announced and this made the long list. It's translated by Anton Herr, who also has another book on the long list called Cursed Bunny. So it's awesome they got long listed twice. But I, so I love this book. I also already read Paradise by Fernando Melchor, which comes out in April in the US, but it's already out in the UK, I believe. And I love that book too. So I've read two out of the 13 books that have been long listed for the International Booker. And for this Sunday Reads, I wanted to ask you all if you'd be curious to see me read the full long list or just get your thoughts generally on the long list if you follow the International Booker. Or if not, I recommend that you check it out because this year, the long list seems really strong, really, like so many books when I was just looking through it and reading the quick synopses, the, a ton of them just really jumped out to me. And also last year, I ended up reading the short list for the International Booker and I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't like one of the books and DNF'd another of them, but I really like the other four that I read. And I'm just curious to maybe try doing a long list reading for the first time, as so many of these really are speaking to me. And also, so I'll show you the ones that I've acquired since. I got some from my library already, which is exciting. So I have Love in the Big City. I also purchased The Books of Jacob, and this one's translated by Jennifer Croft. I am so, like, every day I'm thinking about picking this one up and then I don't do it, but just because I'm nervous to read a book of this size, especially coming, you know, right off of Middlemarch. I've been trying to finish that one and then seeing if I want to read this next, I'm just not sure. And I guess my one fear, like, with reading this book is I really have, like, no historical context for this book. I know that's not really, like, a basis for not reading a book. I think a book should be able to tell a strong story and get you immersed in whatever it's telling you, even if you don't know the historical context. But I just feel like this might be quite daunting, but I own it now and I want to read it and try and see. So I don't know, we shall see. I know many people on here have already read it and I think the consensus is that it's great, but I just don't know. If you have thoughts on the books of Jacob, let me know. I really liked Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, but I know that the book is quite different from this one from what I know. Yeah, I own this one and then I have some out from the library. So just like an hour or two ago, I picked up The Book of Mother by Violaine Huisman. This one is translated by, translated from the French by Leslie Camhe. This one says it's a gorgeous, critically acclaimed debut novel about a young woman's coming of age with a dazzling yet damaged mother who lived and loved in extremes. I love books about fraught daughter-mother relationships, so I definitely want to read this one. Either way, it also has a blurb from Ben Lerner, which is interesting. And I like this cover too. And then next up, I got Claudia Pinheiro's Elliman Nose. This one's translated by Francis Riddle. So this one, I think this one is like a detective novel, actually. Yeah, I think it's about a mom who is investigating the death of her daughter. I guess she's found hanging in a church. And so I guess it's the mother trying to figure out like what happened to her daughter. It says this is a moving novel about hypocrisy that asks us if we can still change our views late in life and find a will to go on despite our failing bodies. So it's a crime novel. Sounds good. I really like Charco Press. Good publisher. And then I also picked up More Than I Love My Life by David Grossman. Again, don't know what it's about. Remarkable novel of suffering, love, and healing. The story of three generations of women and a secret that needs to be told. This one's translated by Jessica Cohen. So I have those. And so, yeah, if you're interested in seeing me read the international long list and make content about it, um, let me know, because I just need a, a big, a bit of a push to, <laughs> to do it. Or I'm maybe considering reading the ones that are calling to me the most, and then definitely reading the shortlist, no matter if it's like of an interest of mine on paper or not, as I did the shortlist last year and I really liked it, so maybe that's the best way to go. But I also just wanna like do a long list. So maybe this is the one that I do, I don't know. But that is that, that is the status of my reading. But yeah, if you have any thoughts on International Booker, anything that I've mentioned, let me know. Let me know what you're reading recently, anything that's good or bad, I would love to hear it in the comments below. Oh, quick update. I have filmed two podcast episodes and I have some more upcoming. I'm just behind on editing them because life has been a little bit crazy and I just haven't really felt inspired to get that content done, but I'm hoping to change that this week. So more pods will be coming soon with some fun guests and yeah. All right, I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.